Today on this old house, we have this incredible space to use. We are going to put in a brick patio. And the original rear door was damaged in the fire, but we're replacing it with a new fire rated one. What happened to all this plumbing here? I've never seen anything like this before. There's already rot going on in that trunk. So what have you found up here? Well, a bit of a surprise. It's really the classic plumber's lament. Nice. It's five bathrooms, it's a kitchen, it's a full new mechanical. It's, it's going to be a biggie. Sounds like you guys have a plan. I think we do. <laughs> the money's in the detail. That is beautiful. Hey there, I'm Kevin O'Connor and welcome back to this old house here on a chilly morning in Dorchester as we continue work on this three-decker. Now last week we started working on the vinyl siding and you can see all of the progress that has been made, mostly done. Morrow and his team are here doing the exterior painting, electrical work inside has started and out back we have got a lot of work going on there too. Morrow, look at you, traded the paintbrush for the rake, I love it. Heads up. Nathan, how are you? Charlie, Jen, you got an army of activity going on back here. It's going down today. <laughs> That's awesome. So, so good. What's the game plan? Well, now we have this urban setting, this whole outdoor space. I wanted to put a patio in. Carol really needed a, a space to come out to entertain. Yeah. And now that this tree is down, we have this incredible space to use. So we got the house right here, we got the deck over there. So we're about, what, 12 and a half feet deep. And then what's that, 20, 25 wide? Uh, so yeah, 12 and it's about 18, 20, you know, depending on what we're going to do here. But we're going to have sitting wall, sitting wall, and then this will be retaining as well. And this is going to be about a 400 square foot brick patio, and then Charlie's going to have his steps coming down. Plantings around, steps down onto? Steps down, right out, out to the lawn, and Heath Eastman's going to throw in a few landscape lights. Awesome. And Charlie, this was a mess back here. I mean, it was a disaster, right? It was. It was a 50-foot uh, Norway maple here that was actually burned by the fire. It was a safety issue. Had to come down. Retaining boulder wall falling apart. We had a great difference from where the old pavement was down about three feet. So Jen's idea is really gonna to come together here. So what we did, we took the pavement out first, took about two and a half feet of old bad material out, brought 14 ton of crushed stone in, brought pack in for the, uh, for the new patio sit on. And some crew too. You got the boys working back there. Yes, they are. This whole house crew, Roger Cook's crew, we've got everyone throwing in for this project. I'm gonna throw in as well, help out. And uh, I wanna see this wall going in too. This looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's really neat. Fred. Hey Kevin, how you doing? I'm doing all right, Mark. Hi Kevin. So this is new to me. I mean, we've done concrete block walls before, but not like this. What am I looking at? Uh, it's, it's a segmental wall. Yeah. It's designed to have um, panels hung on the left, right side. Yeah. So you have a choice if you're going to do um, a freestanding wall or a retaining wall, like this is a retaining wall right here. So everything is concrete, and I'm looking at yep. a, a base piece, a block building piece, you said the face right here hanging off on it. Yep. Show me how this thing works. What's your process? So um, first thing we got, uh, we put our base block down, level it up. Nice. And then uh, Mark's going to come in and put a bead of glue on there for us. So this is just adhesive, concrete to concrete. Yep, block adhesive. I might do you a dab right in the middle, Fred. Go. Look at that. He did you right. OK. Put it in. And so as I look at this block right here, we got uh, little channels, little nubs up on top, little things yep. on the front. How are those working? Well, these cleats right here are these grooves, a design to sit in there gotcha. so we can build the wall plumb. So in that situation, plumb on the front. Yep. But you're saying we can bump that back? If we wanted to put batter into the wall, we'll just knock it back one groove. And by, So stepping back, you mean? Yep. We just push that whole thing back. No kidding. We're only going uh, 18 inches high, so we're, only, we're going to build it plumb. So with it plumb, then how does the face go on? So the face goes on with these cleats on the front. Just put it on, what? drop it, and that's it. Just hanging there? 
Just hangs. So a mortar, glue no here? No mortar, no glue. All right, so let me pull this out. You hold that one. I want to check this system out. So that is, it's almost like a French cleat system, right? You got a little angle on the front tab there, front tab there, opposite direction there. And this guy just drops right in there. No way. And uh, these come in different sizes. So you got a full length, half length here. That's it for your stagger. You can use the half ones for the stagger. Uh, in terms of the face here, what do we have for choices? We have uh, colors and basically um, sizes. So, full so you have size, two sizes, size. so you have a half size and a full size. All right, and what about the tops, choices here? Uh, colors. Colors? Yep. And how do these go down? You say these just get glued? Um, yeah, we gotta, we got to clean the nubs off the top. Right here? Yep. So, so those, hit it, we hit it with the saw. These are on every block, yep. bang them off. Yep, bang them off, and then I, I run my foreign saw and I just clean them up. And so how high up can we go? Uh, typically, we'll go about anything over four feet should be engineered. Four feet, that's unbelievable. So what did you do, Fred, to prep for this? We dug down, we excavated down, put about eight to 10 inches of uh, three quarter stone under the base. Yeah, compacted. We, compacted. Yeah. And then uh, we put a layer, like one inch layer of sand compacted as a set in bed for the base block. Gotcha. So what do you think, Mark? You know what? I've seen a lot of variations of these walls over the years, and this one I love. There's a lot of versatility in it. I haven't seen this hanging system, no. but I really, really like it. And I've been watching this thing go in. I mean, this thing's moving in fast. Yeah. Once the base is in, it really goes up like Legos. You just click and drop. All right. Well, let's click and drop. Keep let's it going. Go. This crew is moving, huh? They are flying. So this is the first time we've seen a modular wall like this go, and you happy with it? I am so happy. It's clean, it's beautiful, it was so easy to put together, half a day, boom, it's I up. I was not expecting finished face on the inside, but that makes a lot of sense. It's so interchangeable, these are like Legos. Yeah. So it's finished on the inside and part of the outside. It's a retaining wall and a sitting wall from this side. So. How about all this? You happy with this? I'm so happy with this. <laughs> this brick is beautiful, the herringbone pattern, it just has a really nice cozy feel. And not bad at all. Yeah. Nice yeah, pulling the team together. So. Yeah, they're great. The fire damage was back here, back of the house, which means that the water damage that affected the plaster is mostly contained to the back of the house as well. In the front of the house, virtually untouched. But what's going on behind the plaster? We've got to figure that out. And in that case, even talking about the electric. Uh, you know, we did have water pouring through the house, so we've got to figure out, can we use the electric? Can't we? What do you think? So we know we had water damage at least on the back portion of the house, but we don't know how far it came into the front. I mean, it looks like it's okay, but we're not really sure. So with that, we want to either test the wiring to see what kind of shape it's in. And can you do that? It can be done, but it's a bit of a process. Or we can actually replace it all. And in this case, I think we're just going to replace it all because it's going to be a little bit quicker for us. And the reason being is someone rewired this entire house just a few years ago by fishing everything in. So all these wires are loose. Someone took the time to cut holes, fish the wires in, and rewire the entire place. So had that not happened, you're saying that the, the, the wire would be typically stapled to two by fours. Exactly. You couldn't pull it, but because someone fished it already, it's probably loose. It should be loose. And we can see that from portions of the home that have been opened up from the fire portion. We know that we can have a pretty good chance of just pulling this right through. So you're literally hoping that that wire right there is loose and can be the one we use to pull a new wire. That's what I'm hoping for. All right, well, let's see what we got. A little bit of surgery, I'll take that. So there's the box. If you want to take that, we'll start by taking the wall switch apart. So we have that 14.3. Let's give it a little tug and see if we can feel that move at all. Feels like it's stuck. Can you, uh, can you budget your way at all? I just felt a little bit of... Yeah, I can barely feel it. Oh man, this thing's... Oh, that's hung up on something. Look at that. I think it's stuck. I think it's stuck where? My guess is we're hung up either something when they patched 
it got kind of filled back in, but when it comes around this corner where our joists run this way, our strapping goes this way, it might have got wedged into a corner of strapping if it wasn't tight. So if we can't pull all the way through, are we back to what the old guy did? Which was... So yeah, cut a hole above the switch, see if we can remove this all together and pull the new one through. All right. I'll take that from you all the way through. What are you saying? There are some of our wires. So the anatomy of this ceiling that lets us do this is we've got, so we've got the joists running this way, mm -hmm. and we know that we're strapped below the joists this way. Exactly. And we have that gap that's under the joist. We go across, then we turn down the joist bay and get over to here. And it's probably at one of those turns where our old wire got hung up. Unfortunately, that's not too uncommon that when you get around one of those corners, if the strapping separates it all, we can get wedged right in that corner. With this opened up, we can fish from one spot to the next? Exactly. So now this is big enough that I can get my hand in. I should be able to catch the fish from over there, reach right on top of the wall plate where the hole was already drilled, be able to stuff the wire down here. And the nice thing about using the hole saw is we can just run this hole saw through a piece of drywall, get a perfect fit for the patch, skim right over and move on to the next one. All right, let's start fishing. There, there, there. Here, oh, hey, hang on, I got it. Right there. Oh, look at that. Nice. Huh? Beautiful. Not bad. So now we're going to get this down through here. So we don't actually have to do that. We found the wire that goes across from here over to the switch through that hole. So we know it's loose going down to the switch. It's just getting stuck coming over to here. So what we can do is pull the wire to you, and then we can cut the wire, tie on where it goes down to the switch, and use that as the pull all the way down. There we go. Pull this right down. Well, now we can put our switch box in here. We can put the fan box up there. Now that we cut the old wire, it comes right out. One down, 12 more to go. <laughs> All right, here in the second floor, this back wooden door is in pretty tough shape. It looks like the fireman might have kicked it in to get into the house during the fire. The door scrapes the floor, and it's really loose. So what's the code say about this door, Charlie? Well, as you know, we have one shaft here that goes from the basement, first floor, second, and third. All that hallway. All that hallway. So if a fire ever is in this area, we got to pr protect all three units, and we're going to start with a 90-minute uh, fire-rated door. Okay, good. Well, this rough opening in the framework is in good shape. We can use that, but we'll take the jam out, the door out, and install a new one. Good, we'll go now. All right, let's bring it over there, get it out of the way. All right. All right, so here's a new door right here. It's just stock size, 3280, I believe. Not only is the door fire rated, but the jam is fire rated, which means that there's no wood in this opening at all except for the framing. And it has a flange here that we nail to because you don't want to put screws through the jam. That's right. Uh, the hinges, they have to be spring-loaded hinges so the door is kept shut. Yeah, right. That way the doors can never be left open. If there's ever a fire, the doors are already closed. Yeah, they automatically will shut. That's right. And it also has a metal threshold and it's weather stripped around the perimeter to stop the air and the smoke from coming in. That's right. And all we did was just check our rough opening, put the order in for the doors, came ready to fit. All right. Set the plumb bob up. Bring it down, stop it from swinging. Now we'll see how far out of plumb this two by is right here. So I measure from the face of the two by to the string line, it's two inches. So now check the distance down here from the face of the two by to the string line, it's two and a half inches, which means this is a half an inch out of plumb and it has to go that way. Perfect, that's plumb now. Because the floor is out of level, it's down on this side, what I did is I took a two by four and I ripped the wedge shape off of it to get me closer to level. I'll check it now, put it down. 
see it with a level. It's now level. I'll screw it down and we're in business. Looks pretty good. Let me just check it real quick for plumb. Right on the money. All right, let's check the door to see how it swings. Feels pretty good. Now to check a door or any door to see if it's plumb in all directions. Wherever I let this door go, it should stay in that spot. And it does, so it's plumb. Now we just have to adjust the hinges so it will automatically close. That's correct. Like most triple deckers, the bathroom stack one on top of another, and that makes the plumbing relatively straightforward. It also means that the bathrooms are always laid out almost the same way. And today's the day the new tubs go in. The tubs are placed against the far wall of the bathroom. Now since that's an outside wall, we're insulating behind the tub with mineral wool. The tubs Carol chose are made of fiberglass. They have several advantages. They're light in weight and easier to install. They're also less expensive. They're more prone to scratching than a porcelain tub, but the finish can be repaired. Throw in a vanity and a toilet, you got a bathroom. Kara replaced all of the windows in the house just a few years ago, but some of them didn't make it through the fire, so we've got to replace them, Tommy. This one back here is one of the ones that didn't make it. Yeah, this is a vinyl window. They were replacement windows when she installed them, and you can see the damage from the fire right here has melted all this vinyl, so this window is definitely junk, and it's got to come out. This is the back corner of the house where the fire was concentrated, so no surprise yep. that that's got to go. No surprise. So that's coming out, and this is the one that's going in? Right. This is actually a combination vinyl and fiberglass window together which means that it's much more rugged than a standard vi vinyl window. It's also more stable. It gets less expansion and contraction and more efficient. So are we talking fiberglass on inside and out? So yep, this fiberglass whole unit. Now, basically what we have here is we have a box. This box right here yep. that the that the moving sash sets in. So the string balances are in here and everything else, and that allows the window to go up and down inside the opening. And that's pretty much the same thing that you had here. This is the box right here that sits inside the jam of the existing window, yep. and the window slides in that. And so replacements, right? Which means we're doing all the work right here from the inside. That's a good thing. We can replace all of this from the inside. We gotta remove the stops, find the screws, take it out, and install the new one. <laughs> Yeah, they used a drywall screw. That's not a good move. Okay, now we got to pull off these interior stops that go against the window. All right. Ah, beautiful. Put the bottom in, and then we'll tip it in. You okay over there, pups? So yep, I'm okay. Suck it in. Yeah, don't you worry about me, Sonny. Suck it in. It's tight. Oh, I don't want to lose it. Yeah. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, let's take it out so we can prep the opening. All right, suck in that gut. You see this piece that's sticking into the opening right here? Well, that's the outside casing. And that's designed so that the old double hung windows would slide up and down here. It would keep that top sash from falling out of the opening. Well, we're going to use that as a stop to put our unit against it, but we're going to seal it so it's going to be airtight and watertight. So now I want to measure the thickness of this unit from the outside in, and that's three and a quarter. So that means I'm going to measure from the back side of this trim right here 
And so I just want to run a straight line across there like there. Keeps me forward a little bit, and you'll see why in a minute. All right, good. So now I'm going to take, and I'm going to run a bead of caulking right across the outside edge of that line. So this is the inside of that box that's going to hold the sash in place. And you can see where I am in relationship to the outside edge. We're way up here. So if any water should get inside to that unit in that sill, it will run out. Okay, so the next is a piece of backer rod right here. And I like to put a piece right across the bottom. I'm going to push this right into this wet caulking. Now when we set the window on that, that'll compress, sealing any air from coming out, and no water can come up. Okay, so now we're ready to put that window in. Now we want to try to get it out as close as we can to the back side of that outside casing. About there. All right, I want to kick it to me a little bit so we're centered. That looks pretty good. All right, now we might have to push the window down. No, look at that, nice. I want to eyeball the dimension down each side. And I check the gap right here. You see the space between the sash and the frame? I look up here to see if it's equal and it's wider at the top. So now if I look across here at the gap at the top of the sash where it meets the box of the unit is wider here than it is down the bottom. So they're both wider, which tells me that the box has got a slight bow in it, which is common when you get these. And that's why we need to shim this back to create an equal space between the sash and the box on each side. And I'll put a couple on this side and put a couple of screws in. There's a couple more on the bottom. Okay, that's out right there. There you go. Get those uh, shims out and then rebuild the stops for the inside? Right, we'll make new stops, new stool, new trim in the room that could gut it. And it's going to look great. Yeah, looks good already. We've got a couple more of those to do. Yep. All right, well, we'll get working on those. And next time, Carol's going to start shopping for appliances for this kitchen down here on the first floor and two more upstairs. So until then, I'm Kevin O'Connor. And I'm Tom Silva. For this old house here in Dorchester. Next time on This Old House. Bobby and Jay. Hey, Bobby, nice to meet, nice you. To meet you. Jay. Hey, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. This season for Generation Next, we have partnered with YouthBuild, an organization that helps young people who aspire to improve their lives but lack the resources or the skills. This building has three floors, three sets of utilities, gas and electric, and it needs three separate HVAC systems.